Hi, I'm Julie Weber at Liberate Ministries, and today's topic is called Release and Moving Forward. All information is quoted from my Lady Liberty workbook on pages 141 through 146. Well, let's start by taking a look at the meaning of the two key words in this week's lesson title. Release is to free from confinement, bondage, obligation, pain, etc. Let go, to release a prisoner, to release someone from a debt. Forward is moving on, advancing. Well, through God's grace, you have experienced a release from the things that you have faced while going through this course. The good news is that the release you receive is not meant for just a few moments, but for the rest of your life. It is critical now, as the course ends, to learn how to move forward in your healing so that it is reinforced and grow strong over the years to come. Well, principles to protect and strengthen your healing. We will cover six key principles to help you protect and strengthen the healing that you received. The principles are, number one, continue on your healing journey. Number two, overcome doubt. Number three, don't go back. Number four, keep moving. Number five, celebrate recovery. And number six, Stay connected. Well, number one, continue on your healing journey. Let's read Matthew 13, 3 through 9. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, there was scorched, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, in the parable of the sower, much of the seed sown was devoured, dried up, or choked out. The good soil that Jesus talked about was the only soil where the seed was able to grow and multiply. Your heart is like the good soil in the story. You have been tending to your heart for the last nine weeks. Gone from your heart are the stones of guilt and shame. Your heart, the good soil, is moist, watered with forgiveness. Also, your heart is richly nourished from the Word of God. The purpose of going through the Course and the memorial service is to grow the effects of healing in your life. To produce a great harvest. Well, that is why it is important to continue on your healing journey. Just like the farmer who quits working the soil can expect the soil to produce fewer crops over time, we can also expect our healing to produce less of a harvest in our lives if we stop cultivating the good soil of our heart. So throughout the years, I have been extremely encouraged when I hear a post-abortive woman tell me that they are continuing on in their healing journey. So how do you continue on in your healing journey? Well, God has been speaking to you as you have viewed and processed these videos. He will be your best guide as to how to continue. You will want to continue reading your Bible and he may direct you to read additional books on topics surrounding emotional healing. You will also want to keep the discipline of prayer in your life that you have strengthened during the course. Number two, overcome doubt. When we make a decision, it is natural to wonder if we have made the right choice. 
you know, doubt is unpredictable because it might come one week later after the decision or many years later. At some point in the future, you might want to question if you were really healed of the trauma of abortion. You might think that nothing has really happened in your life. Satan is also quick to reinforce those thoughts and plant new thoughts of his own to tell you that the release you experienced was not real. So when doubts come, this is the time to look at the evidence of your healing. Review my videos and their description notes to be reminded of the teachings that changed your thinking and caused you to begin to live a different way. Most of the videos also list their Bible verses for you to search out again. If you feel that Satan is the one who is causing you to doubt your healing, be reminded of this following verse. It's James 4, 7. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So by submitting these thoughts or these doubts to God and resisting the devil, we are assured that he will flee from us. Number three, don't go back. Have you heard the concept of burning bridges? In war, armies would advance. As armies would advance, they would often burn the bridges behind them so that they couldn't go back. So once they gained territory, the commander made sure that the soldiers went forward and didn't retreat. Spiritually, it is the same way. We need to advance beyond the memorial service and burn the bridges behind us so that we do not go back to the old way of thinking and living and lose the effect of the memorial in our lives. So how do you want to look at life? Through prison bars or without prison bars? You know, our family once took a trip to Disney World Epcot Center in Florida and we visited the nation of France and saw a mime in a ball. He was walking in this human-sized, clear plastic ball very slowly. He kept looking for a way out with his hands, but as he advanced, he had no way out and had to stay captive in this ball. This was his prison. He was looking for freedom, a way out. I was struck by the fact that at some point, uh, at some point, he must have entered that ball on his own and entering that ball on a daily basis. He also noted that the plastic walls of the ball were not overly thick and that the, the mind could have torn his way out of the ball any time he chose. The mime was in prison and he didn't have to be. Be conscious that you have been released from the bondage of the negative after effects of your abortions and that you need not enter your prison cell again. At the time of the memorial service, the spiritual work was done, but going forward, each person has to walk it out in their lives. The key to this principle is to leave the bridges burned behind you and never go back. Deuteronomy 12, 32 tells us that whatever I command you, be watchful and do it. You shall not add to it or diminish it. Number four, keep moving. John Maxwell, author of the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership says that the momentum is easier to steer than it is to start. For example, it is harder to get up out of the water and moving on a pair of water skis than it is to steer the water skis once you are moving. To apply this to your life after your abortion healing, keep moving. It is easier for God to steer you than 
if you remain at a standstill. By moving forward and trying new things, God can steer your course. Can you remember a time when you tried many different ideas, but they just didn't turn out? I sure have. And after each attempt, I may not have always been <clears throat> succeeded, but I definitely knew what I didn't want to do. So it, it is for you, the path that God leads you, leads you on may not be a straight line. Don't worry. Don't despair so long as you don't stop. Have confidence that he is steering you. He will correct your course to make sure that you are headed forward correctly. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths telling others. So when I teach this class, I always get asked the question, when should I tell my kids? And when should I tell my family and friends? And the answer is, it depends. First, my advice for telling kids, you know, they should be old enough to understand both what you are saying and also the context of the what you are saying. You know, my kids were in their young teens when they heard me reveal that I had had an abortion. And it doesn't do any good to share your story when they don't understand it. And how old should they be? You'll know in your heart. If you have doubts, wait a little longer. I do recommend that you tell them when they're old enough to understand because I really believe that we have a responsibility to educate our children. I wouldn't want my children to make the same mistakes that I did. So it is better that they know. In the case of my children, it has made them wise and more aware of the dark side of abortion and its consequences. I have heard them speak to their friends about life and by sharing my story with them. When this happens, it is exciting because I can see that they get it. And they don't want themselves or any of their friends to make a poor choice. You never know who the next generation's Jim Dobson will be or other great pro-life leaders uh, to fight for the unborn. It could be one of your children. A lot of the pro-life leaders today are getting older. So we need the next generation to rise up and continue the fight. Pray for the right timing that you should reveal it to them. Pray that God will prepare their hearts to receive the information that you need to share with them about your abortions. So when you decide to tell them, how do you tell them? Pick a time when you have their attention. Tell them your story. You may feel an immediate release right after like a burden has been lifted, but keep in mind that they are receiving heavy, important information for the first time. Their reaction may be mixed when you first tell them. They have lost a sibling and they may need time to process this about your abortions. They may feel momentary shame or embarrassment. They might be angry for a while. Pray for them while they take time to process this information over the next week or so. Make yourself available to answer any of their questions that they may have. Second, my advice for telling family and friends. You know, like you did for your children, pray for all the people you want to share your story with. Pray that God would soften their hearts to receive the information that you want to share with them about your abortions. 
Pray for the right timing that you should reveal it to them. You may not want to tell them while you are going through this course. That also depends upon you. The course is designed for you to focus on your healing. You yourself need to come to the grip with your past abortions. All the pain and the emotions have been reawakened and are close to the surface. As a result, the situation may be too raw for you to effectively share your story with a lot of others. Maybe you will be ready towards the end of the class uh, in a month from now or a couple of months. If your spouse is involved in some way and you are having a hard time with communication, then work on you first. Then after you get some healing in yourself, then I would encourage you both to go to the Liberate Ministries videos together, marriage videos together, to learn how to bring healing principles into your marriage relationship. Some women do share their stories with their children family, and friends during this course. Pray for the right timing for you to tell the ones that you love about your abortion. You have come this far with the Lord and he will continue to guide you through the next step when it is time. Lastly, you shouldn't feel that you need to tell everyone. I don't share my testimony with everyone I meet. I have learned to be sensitive to the leading of God as to when to share and equally important when to wait. The benefit of sharing your story is freedom. Relationships can grow to the next level when you don't have to be so careful to hide a poor choice in your past. Over time, your story can become less of a breaking news item, and more of an accepted part of a normal conversation for those that you have shared your story with. That's freedom. Bonding is another benefit that can come from sharing your story with your children, other family members, and friends. Those I've confided in have heard me humbly share a painful part of my life with them. And it, in the end, uh, this has allowed me to grow closer with them. Some of my students have told me that they have experienced an added degree of closeness with those after they have shared. In fact, some of the people I shared my story with felt relieved when I told them because they, they sensed that something was going on. So be led of the Lord because he will continue to guide you in this area. Number five, be sure to celebrate recovery. You took a big step in personal growth by completing this course. Reward yourself for having the courage to take some personal time to grow with the Lord. Think of all this past time and weeks as an investment in your future. Number six, staying connected. You know, most post-abortive women develop some interest in pro-life issues as a result of their own healing. Well, here are some ways of staying connected to the abortion recovery field in our cities, states, and nations. Get on the mailing list of local pro-life organizations whose belief you support. Get on the mailing list of abortion recovery organizations where you are in agreement with their belief. Volunteer at local pregnancy help centers. They are often in need of volunteers and many times they will provide training. Understand and become aware of your nation's laws that involve life support issues for you as a woman. When appropriate and safe, get involved. You will 
likely cross paths with others who have had an abortion. Always be ready to share your testimony with them. Giving out to someone the way you have been giving to in the abortion recovery healing area helps those who are not healed yet. So consider being a resource for them. Let me pray for you. Dear God, go in peace and serve the Lord with new energy and purpose. Let no one tell you that you are not healed. Dare to live and love those you encounter without the chains of guilt and shame and grief and doubt of the past. Amen. Well, thanks for watching. Live life liberated.